Victor Moore, are you? Good, good, good. I think we are fairly close to 9 o'clock, so we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the September 30th meeting of the Board of County Commissioners. My name is Shelley Bueller, and I have the pleasure of serving as chair of the commission alongside Commissioner Kevin Cook and Commissioner Bob Archer. Good morning. Seems good like morning. a long time since we've been yeah, together, so good to see everybody. Madam Clerk, the first item, please. First item is item three, consent agenda. Are there questions on the consent agenda? Madam Chair, I would move to approve the consent agenda as presented. There's a motion by I'll Commissioner Cook. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Item 4, new business, A County Clerk number 1, consider all voucher payments. Madam Chair, this morning we have one set of voucher payments dated September 27th, 2013. Uh, total amount of $5,542,494.74. I've talked to the appropriate people on my questions, and they've been answered, so I'll make a motion to approve the vouchers as presented. Okay, thank you. There's a motion by Commissioner Archer. I would second. Second by Commissioner Cook, and the reason uh, for that large amount is third quarter allocations, correct? Partially. All right. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Item A2, cons uh, consider correction orders. A small amount. Move approval. I'll second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. <coughs> Item B, Kansas Expo Center. Number one, consider approval of request for capital expenditures for the following. A, purchase of a new Amana heat pool unit for the ticket booth in an amount of $700. B, adjustment of coolant levels on the ice plant at a cost of $1,018. Good morning, Commissioner. H.R. Cook, General Manager, Kansas Expo Center. Uh, the one unit regarding the heat cool unit is a uh, kind of a window unit that we have in one of our ticket booths and the ice plant. Uh, it's just a annual adjustment of our cooling system that we have in there. It's a normal process. So be glad to have, answer any questions you may have regarding these two items. These were presented to the advisory board and approved. Thanks, HR. I'll make a motion to approve the request. Second. It's a motion by Commissioner Archer and second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. It's interesting with your minutes, you have to put T. Cook and now HR Cook. Uh, because a uh, visit to Topeka, and then we have Cheer Commissioner <laughs> Cook, right. so. It, it, it got a little confusing on the inner city visit. I was actually <laughs> confused with the commissioner, and, and uh, we made a lot of, I made a lot of good decisions. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody gets 3%. <laughs> and I enjoy being the director of the Expo Center. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thanks, HR. Uh, oh. <laughs> Item C, Public Works Solid Waste, number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C, 459-2013 with Bartlett and West for construction engineering services for the Northwest 46th and North Topeka Boulevard intersection project at a lump sum cost of $280,000. Good morning, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. Tom Block with uh, Public Works and Solid Waste. This is a public works item, and this is a state in the memo of the contract for construction engineering and construction staking and um, materials testing services for the sales tax product which is at North West 46th Street in Topeka Boulevard and this um, will be funded 100% uh, through the countywide asset sales tax program and this falls in line with the uh, project budget and also falls in line with other products of similar nature in the past. So with that, we'd recommend approval of, of this contract. Okay, thank you, Tom. Are there questions? Oh. I'm sorry, Tom. Uh, just uh, <coughs> shortly, Tom, would you uh, explain some of the benefits of this road project 
Uh, I know we talk a lot about sales tax projects, but I don't think we emphasize or publicize enough the benefits that we receive from these projects. Yeah, this particular project, again, is at the intersection of, of Northwest 46 and Topeka Boulevard. And right now it is um, controlled by a traffic signal. We're going to be um, improving the intersection in conjunction, actually, with another project which is going to be paid through a different funding source that goes out to Northwest 46 and, uh, and Rochester Road. <coughs> so that whole segment between Rochester and Topeka on 46 uh, will be will be reconstructed um, and improved to uh, urban standards with curb and gutter, sidewalks of that nature. Uh, we're planning on putting in a roundabout actually at 46 in Topeka. So that will um, that will help improve um, traffic volumes through the intersection. And although I know a lot of people aren't don't aren't sold on roundabouts, there actually is a lot of benefits to roundabouts. One of the big benefits of roundabouts is is when when people enter a roundabout intersection, um, as opposed to a four-way stop or a stoplight or a, or a 90 degree angle intersection, the type of accidents you occur, you have at those types of intersections is typically a right angle accident. And right angle accidents are most likely, besides, besides head-on collisions, are the most likely to have serious injuries and extensive damage uh, to a vehicle. Now when you have a roundabout intersection, essentially all people are doing is yielding uh, to to a car that's coming from their left. And if a car is in an intersection and if a car fails to yield, they will basically, and if they collide, they collide essentially going at less than a 90 degree angle and essentially going in the same direction. So what that does is that really lessens the impact of a collision and really reduces the amount of, of injuries and severity of injuries if there were accidents um, at that type of intersection. But also, um, instead of having to stop and wait at an intersection, if there's no traffic coming from one direction, you just simply you know, look and yield. And if there's no vehicles there, you just go right on through. And it cuts down on, on traffic time. It saves gasoline. It, it reduces, uh, that's, like I said, it reduces the, uh, the, uh, really the number of accidents. And the reason why it reduces the number of accidents a typical intersection, if I remember right, there's there's 22 different types of conflict points at a regular intersection, whereas with a roundabout intersection, it reduces that down to eight conflict points. So um, um, there is, a, you know, there all as with any change in an intersection, there is that learning curve. But once that learning curve is established, and I think folks in this in the Topeka area are now we have enough of them are really becoming accustomed to roundabouts. Um, and are really learning how to drive them quite well. Um, so, in our opinion, there's there's several benefits to that, um, uh, to having this improvement being done. Um, and also, in our long-range goals, at least, <coughs> I personally would like to see 46th Street corridor from Highway 75 to K4 be ultimately uh, reconstructed at some point, so that can be a nice east-west corridor between the two major major uh, state highways. Um, you know, no plans have been made in concrete yet for for getting that all accomplished, but that is in the back of our minds of someday hoping to be able to accomplish that for the north side of, of the metro area. So and this would be one segment one segment closer I guess to, to getting that accomplished. Yes. Yeah if if I may, Madam Chair. I, yeah I agree with you on um, uh, roundabouts I was a late blooming convert, but I remember after uh, uh, being elected to the city council, we were considering the roundabout at 29th and Urich. And I asked uh, Mike Tepley, who was the public works director at that time, to do a cost benefit study for me. And uh, he spent several weeks looking at it, and it just makes sense socially and economically uh, uh, all the way around better than a signalized intersection, which is incredibly expensive also. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I, If I might interject there also, I, um, uh, on my way home, oftentimes before the 
21st and Yersh roundabout was completed, I would sometimes go through that intersection and it was a four-way stop. And literally, <coughs> I would be backed up for a quarter of a mile mm -hmm. and would sit there 10 to 15 minutes just to get through that intersection. And I know the same was going off uh, on the east leg also, those going westbound and going home. And, and literally would sit in a line for 10 to 15 minutes to get through the intersection. <coughs> Since that roundabout has been in, installed, I bet I have not waited more than 30, 45 seconds uh, ever since then. And uh, that, to me, just really illustrates the, the point of, of how efficient they are. Um, so I'm, and I too, I, I, I'll be honest with you, when I first came accustomed to roundabouts, I wasn't sold on them either. <coughs> and I may not be as late of a bloomer as a, as a convert as you, but I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sold at first, but then after having having driven through them and, and learning how to drive through them. I guess why I have the podium, <coughs> I, like <to> <laughs> <laughs> I, I think there's two simple things mm -hmm. folks can do to learn how to drive a roundabout. And that is as you approach the roundabout, just look to your left and yield to vehicles on your left. And then once you're in the roundabout, you just need to be a defensive driver, assuming the person coming in the roundabout is gonna make a mistake. If you do those two things, you can maneuver almost any roundabout very simply and very easily so yeah I uh, I was a skeptic and uh, but money talks and the cost benefits and the social benefits of the balance and convinced me they're a good idea uh, I'll make a motion to approve uh, sure. Sure. there is a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer second a second by Commissioner Cook further discussion all those in favor say aye opposed no <coughs> motion carries three to zero Item C2, consider approval of request for a sole source purchase of parts from Can Equip Inc. for a Kubota tractor seat in an amount of $1,654.30 and purchase of a ballast from Ozonia North America for the Sherwood Waste Treatment Plant in an amount of $2,583, mm -hmm. which includes shipping and handling. Hi, right, Commissioners. Tom Lock again with Public Works and Solid Waste. Uh, the first item with the um, Again, is actually a, a, a tractor seat and um, a compressor and air hose assembly. So it's not just the seat, it's, it's a little bit more than that. But um, that was for a, um, that is for a uh, tractor for our public works division. And um, it needs to be replaced so we can continue to use that tractor uh, to continue uh, mowing. And, um, the uh, can equip is the vendor for Kubota tractors, and that is why it was sole source with them. Uh, the funding source would come from our uh, 10 PW 128 uh, account, which is our equipment, uh, garage equipment, lease maintenance uh, account. And then the second item uh, for the Azonia is for the Sherwood Wastewater Treatment Plant, and that is for. Um, some uh, replacement parts for the ultraviolet disinfection uh, equipment, which is utilized to kill off uh, harmful bacteria as it goes through the treatment process. And the Zonia is the manufacturer of the UV disinfection equipment, and you can only put their parts back into their equipment. So that is why um, they are the sole source uh, vendor. And that uh, payment would come from the Sherwood Regional Wastewater System account, uh, which is a user fee-based account, and no tax fund, no tax monies would be used for that. So, if any questions regarding those two items, I'd be happy to put them. In. Thank you. Are there questions? Motion to approve the expenditure. There's a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item C3, consider approval of emergency purchase for diagnostics and repair of an engine in a solid waste truck in the amount of $5,970.38 and for diagnostics and repair of a transmission in a solid waste truck in the amount of $2,570.58. Uh, Commissioner Tom Block again, uh, this item is, uh, both these items are for solid waste and um, 
again, the, I, we have not gotten our, our our diagnostic equipment yet that we have that we have ordered. So that we're still why we're having to bring them to uh, to a dealer to have some diagnostics done. Um, but um, the first one again is um, for some um, turbos that have failed and. and this is a pretty common occurrence with these types of trucks and the way they're driven. Um, these, with the, the stopping and starting with the solid waste trucks, it is just very uh, difficult on engines, and there's just no way around it. That's just the way you have to uh, collect uh, recycling and, and, and waste, and so a lot of um, difficult, hard usages put on these trucks. Um, and we've had several of these same types of, of uh, issues with other trucks as I'm sure you're aware here recently and <coughs> the fact of the matter is that's just part of this business with this and then the uh, second one is the repair of the transmission and we don't have the capability to do transmission work uh, in our in our garage we always send out transmission work um, so that is the why these were, I mean, we had these done as emergency purchase and we need to get these trucks back on the road so we can provide service to our customers. So both of the funding will come from, both of the uh, requests would come from the solid waste account, uh, again, which is uh, user fee based and um, there would be no tax monies involved uh, for the for these repairs. Okay, thank you, Tom. Are there questions on the, on the request? Our motion. Motion to approve the emergency expense. Second. There's a motion by Commissioner Cook, second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Yes. All right, thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Item D, information technology number one. Consider authorization and execution of contract C460-2013 with Vera Mark in the amount of $1,460 for annual maintenance of software used in maintaining call accounting records for inbound and outbound phone calls. Good morning, Commissioners. Pat O'Blender with the Information Technology Department. <coughs> uh, this item is for the uh, maintenance for the software that we use to uh, manage and record information about phone calls coming into and out of our private ban branch exchange system for the county. You have to answer any questions if you have those. Motion to approve the contract. So motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Oppose no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item D2, consider authorization and execution of contract C461-2013 with Info COPS Service Division in an amount of $1,990 for annual maintenance of the PS300 folder sealer used during the processing of voucher checks. Uh, commissioners, this is the uh, maintenance annual maintenance contract for the equipment that we use uh, to process quite a few of the uh, checks, uh, mailers, and a variety of other pieces of material that come through the county that require uh, sealing or folding. That's, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have on that. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, Pat, why is this under the Information Technology Department's budget? Um, Probably because um, it's one of those items that um, it, it, it's moved around to, to various departments over the years. But since multiple departments uh, use this piece of equipment, um, it's kind of come back to the uh, information technology department to support that. Um, that. That's really the best answer that I have for that. Um, we tend to be the catch-all for quite a few things like this, where a number of departments use a central resource. Has it been looked at in the past if this should be labeled under a general fund expense as opposed to being designated within a department? I mean, it doesn't seem that this really is germane to the information technology department. I don't know that it's been looked at uh, in the past, but we, we could certainly do that <coughs> if you'd like for us to, to take that step. Yeah. Just does this kind of to follow up on Commissioner Cook's questions um, as far as who utilizes this folder sealer the most? Which department are you aware of counting and, and who would use it the most? Would it be? Um, there's uh, probably three areas that use it the most. Okay. Uh, there's uh, treasurer's checks that we process through those. Okay. Uh, the appraiser's office has quite a few mailings that go through there. 
uh, voucher checks are printed on there, so the commission office uses it uh, quite a bit for processing those. Those would be the three biggest areas that I can think of. Is this the only expense that's associated with this sealer then, or? Yes, just the annual maintenance Just cost. annual maintenance. Mm -hmm. How old is it? The, the device itself, I'm thinking it's about eight years old. I'd have to look that up to be certain, but I think that's the age on it. Okay. Well, a little bit of follow-up discussion, too, on maybe budget for next year and looking to see where this falls any better. Yeah. And, and Pat, maybe I agree. If, to follow up on that, if you could identify things that are really just caught under your department but really not part of your department, mm -hmm. if you could identify those and maybe pass those on to a lot of finance department so that when we're going through the budget process, we can make those adjustments. If they're not part of your department but just fell under it, Mm -hmm. And that might be a discussion for all department heads if there's things that they're doing that really have nothing to do with their department. Just really having a better accounting. I'll, I'll do that. Motion to approve. It's a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. And I'll second the motion. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome. Item E, corrections, number one, consider approval of request to award bid to McElroy's Inc. for the purchase and installation of replacement rooftop uh, HVAC units and to negotiate a contract in an amount not to exceed $250,000. Good morning, Commissioners. Eve Kendall, Deputy Director, Department of Corrections. Uh, the contract in front of you, well, actually is just a request to formalize a contract with McElroy's. Um, this is a multi-year project for us. Uh, the HVAC units that were are six in number. We're hoping to replace two with the amount of uh, that does not exceed two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. But uh, the other four will probably be within the next three or four years. Uh, God willing, the units you know stay mm -hmm. <laughs> until we actually replace them. Uh, the RFP we had a pre bid conference at the end of last m month, and uh, we had uh, two formal bids. McElroy's was the lowest bidder, so we're hoping to uh, create a final contract with them. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Motion to approve the request. So motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. And just a question, Eve. Yes. They are going to replace the most senior of the uh, <laughs> units, correct? I mean. There's that assessment with all six right. of those units. Right. We've uh, we have we part of the process was assessing which ones needed to be replaced, uh, the worst, the most. Yeah. You know, sometimes the most seniors aren't the ones that are the problem. Just like yeah. people, yeah. sometimes <laughs> just because you're senior doesn't mean that you're that you're failing. So yeah. we are going. Oh, to the train there. <laughs> the, uh, our uh, our goal is replace the ones that needed the worst right. first. And then uh, we'll okay. move forward from there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Had to ask, though. I had to answer. Okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Item E2, consider authorization and execution of contract C462-2013 with Timekeeping Systems, Inc. in an amount of $1,115 for annual maintenance of software for the, great, the Guard 1 Plus Rounds tracker system that allows for electronic tracking and reporting of all inmates and other security rounds performed daily by staff. Again, Commissioners, this is a, an annual contract that we, uh, we try and keep uh, support of this technology. Um, we use it in making sure that it's a way to, for us to document uh, electronically when the inmates are being uh, monitored, checked on a routine basis. Um, this is just a maintenance contract to make sure that we're uh, staying up to date with the software. Okay. Further questions? Motion to approve. It's motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. A second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Item F, Health Agency. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C463-2013 with KDHE for funding in an amount of $977,942 plus any reallocation of federal funds that may become available for the WIC Breastfeeding Peer Counselor Program. Good morning, Commissioners. Allison Alejos, Health Agency. Um, I just want to point out there is a correction on this. The amount that's listed of $977,942 is incorrect. It should be 
$136. Um, this is actually the WIC contract. Um, it allows us to provide um, nutrition and health education to qualifying participants. We're able to provide um, referrals to other service providers in the area that they might be needing assistance with. Um, there are approximately 6,700 participants that we serve through the WIC program. And in addition, this contract also includes our breastfeeding care counselor um, contracts. And those two women that we have that provide that service are reaching probably around 400 individuals through the program. And this is for the next upcoming federal fiscal year. And there's no cost to the county to provide these services. Thank you, Allison. Are there questions? I'll move, do, well, I'll move approval of the contract to second by Commissioner Cook. Yes. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Item F2, consider authorization and execution of contract C-464-2013 with Bobonzi County for WIC services provided by the health agency with all costs to be paid through the KDHE grant funding. Uh, this is a renewal contract through our WIC um, agreement. We provide services, outreach services in Wabunsee and also Osage um, counties, which you'll see on the next request. Uh, through this, we provide $4,000 payment to Wabunsee County, but we receive some funding within the um, WIC budget itself for the services that we provide. We do things in those counties, um, such as consultation to their staff. We do some in-service training and are doing fiscal oversight for those responsibilities of WIC in those um, partnering counties. And again, there's no cost to the county for this contract. Okay, thank you, Allison. Yes, Commissioner. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. How long have we partnered with Wabunsee and Osage County in this endeavor, do you know? I can tell you for the last 12 years that I've been here, we have been doing that. I don't know before that. Do we, we, we don't know? 15? Is that right? Okay. I'll make a motion to approve. So motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. Second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries three to zero. Item F3, consider authorization and execution of contract C463-2013 with Osage County for WIC services provided by the health agency with all costs to be paid through KDHE grant funding. Again, this is a renewal contract to provide those services in Osage County. Uh, we're seeing probably 293 people through there and there's approximately $19,000 that's going to Osage County for those services. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Motion to approve. It's a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries three to zero. Item F4, consider authorization and execution of contract C-466-2313 with Elizabeth McNamee to serve with a, as a WIC breastfeeding peer counselor with all costs to be paid through KDHE grant funding. Um, this is our breastfeeding peer counselor, one of two contracts that you'll see. Um, and the individuals that do this are actually helping and providing support for those new breastfeeding moms. Uh, they receive very intensive training uh, to become qualified as a breastfeeding peer counselor. And they are supervised by a dietitian within the WIC program. And each counselor probably sees about 200 individuals. Motion to approve. It's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item F5, consider authorization and execution of contract C-467-2013 with Sharon Nelson to serve as a WIC breastfeeding peer counselor with all costs to be paid through KDHE grant funding. And this is the second Same. breastfeeding peer counselor. Okay. I'll move approval of the request. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you, Commissioners. Item F6, consider authorization and execution of contract C-468-2013 with Central Century Health Solutions, establishing a provider group for the health agency that allows providers to be reimbursed for services provided to the health agency consumers who carry Century Insurance coverage. Good morning, Commissioners. Alice Weingartner, Health Agency. Um, this right here, as it says, is just replacing the current contract and going from individual provider contracts to a group practice contract. Um, and this is something we've been working with County, county Legal on um, in making that change. I'd be happy to answer any other questions. With our other insurance companies, I will tell you, we are under group practice, and so that was why um, we've worked to make that move. Okay. Thank you, Alice. Thank you, Madam Chair. Is, is there any um, additional cost involved in having a consolidated versus an individual 
there is, basis. There is not. It's okay. just, it's actually easier, I would say, on our end as okay. we hire new providers to have them assigned to the group practice versus going through individual contracts. So that's the advantage for Shawnee County. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Further questions or a motion? Motion to approve. So motion by Commissioner Archer, second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thanks, Alice. Item G, register of deeds. Number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C 469-2013 with e-recording partners network LLC uh, EPN -E for electronic recording services to function as a trusted third party for title insurance companies, attorneys, mortgage bankers, full service banks, and other trusted entities to submit electronic documents to government entities for recording at no cost to the county. Morning, Becky Neosi, Register of Deeds. Uh, this is a request to allow EPN, uh, E-Recording Partners Network, to be a vendor uh, for recording electronic documents. Uh, this helps us increase our efficiencies, saves costs and time, um, and with the 2014 budget cuts, we'll be losing staff, so this will really help out. Hopefully, um, this will increase our revenues um, by um, opening the door to, uh, um, to new people coming in. So. I'd be happy to answer questions if you have any. I have no questions. The only, well, actually, I do have one question. This was re uh, reviewed by uh, County Legal yes, as it was. well. Yes, Okay, all right. And I apologize, I failed to have them stamp it, so, but we, we discussed it. So. Okay. I spoke with her before the meeting because I didn't see a stamp on it, yeah. and I had okay. another question, and she okay. said it was reviewed by our office. Okay. Yeah, and we made sure there's no cost to the county. This is uh, the outside vendors uh, pay for it, uh, uh, pay EPN to use the service if they choose. Okay, and it's a choice. They can choose others as well. Um, yes, uh, we actually are uh, using another company called Simplifile, so this will add um, another vendor, another okay. choice, hopefully increase competition. Sure. And, um, and uh, if they can also just mail-in documents the old-fashioned way. <laughs> so we're hoping to increase the e-recording and save us sure. um, time opening the mail, scanning, exactly. um, uh, stamping it, putting it back in the mail. just saves us a lot of time. We still have to review the documents. But. Yeah, good deal. Okay, thank you. Are there further questions? I'll make a motion to approve the contract. It's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Second. And second by Commissioner Cook. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item H, Parks and Recreation, number one, consider authorization and execution of contract C-470-2013 with the City of Topeka to, to memorialize the party's understanding of the use of the Police Athletic League's van and the Oakland Community Center. Good morning, Commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. I'll do my best to be informative and entertaining, although Mr. Vlock did set the bar pretty high with that explanation <laughs> of roundabouts. <laughs> This, uh, this item this morning is a contract with, um, uh, between the City of Topeka and Shawnee County. Uh, the Police Athletic League for many years has run a youth basketball program for high school age students at our Oakland Community Center. In trade off of us not charging uh, them fees, they've allowed us the use of a van, uh, the Police Athletic League van in which we use to pick up children from elementary schools and bring them to our uh, community center for our after school program which we make a, a fairly good revenue off of. Be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Have none. Motion to approve the contract. It's motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item H2, consider authorization and execution of contract C-471-2013 with Senior Community Service Employment Program to allow individuals over the age of 55 to volunteer at various parks and recreation locations at no cost to the county. Uh, commissioners, this is a program that provide, helps provide us with some, a resource for volunteers for our different programs and operations. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Uh, Go ahead, Commissioner. I guess it's appropriate for me to make a motion to approve. <laughs> Second. Second by in several years, you may be interested in this program. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Three to zero. Item H3, consider authorization and execution of contract C-472-2013 with the Society of European Stage Authors and Composers 
uh, to allow uh, Parks and Recreation to publicly play musical compositions by artists in the, uh, the in this association repertoire at a cost of two thousand sixteen dollars. Uh, commissioners, this is a, a, a contract that allows us to play music at the different events, uh, different facilities that we have. Uh, we generally have three of these contracts, one with uh, uh, CSAC, also BMI, and ASCAP. I'd be happy to answer any other questions you may have. Thank you, Sean. Other questions? Motion to approve. It's a motion to approve by Commissioner Cook. Second. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries through to zero. John, will, when will we see those others? Are they? They, uh, they, they, they are, uh, they expire at different times of the year. Okay. I okay. think, um, uh, I don't know. That's fine. I'll okay. For sure. Item C4, I'm sorry, H4, uh, consider approval of request to solicit bids for the demolition and backfilling of the Crestview Pool at an estimated cost of seventy to $80,000. Uh, commissioners, if you'll recall, back in April, we recommended the uh, closure of the Crestview uh, pool. Um, uh, it, that's, uh, this item today is the uh, uh, request to solicit bids to see what it would cost to refill the um, and demolish the pool that is there now. Uh, be happy to answer any other questions you may have. If there's some work that we can do, we'll try to do that. We'll work with Public Works if there's some work that they can do, but I think the first step on uh, getting this rolling would be to solicit bids to see what a private contractor would do. What time frame are you looking at as far as doing this work? Uh, so, uh, uh, th we would begin doing this work this fall, late this fall, early next spring, as weather permits. I will uh, sadly make a motion to approve. It's a motion to approve by Commissioner Archer. Um, second. Is there a second? Second by Commissioner Cook. We will see this, though, one more time because we will approve bids, correct? Yes, the commission has to have the or right. has the authority to approve bids. I don't. Okay. All right. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Item H5, consider approval of request to waive the purchasing resolution for the purchase of a boat motor at, for the work barge at Lake Shawnee at an estimated cost of 7600 to $8,100. Uh, commissioners, uh, as we were uh, preparing for winter, bringing docks in, doing other work on the lake, uh, it is becoming more and more evident that the um, boat motor on our work barge is on its last legs. Um, instead of waiting until that boat motor goes completely out, which could be any minute now, uh, uh, Terry Burles and the Parks Division would like to buy a new motor, solicit bids. We visited with Betty in the Audit Finance Department. This this, as opposed to an emergency purchase, was the recommended course of action. Be happy to answer any other questions you may have. You'll continue to use the old boat motor until it does die. Thank you, Sean. Are there questions? Or a motion? Motion to approve. Motion by Commissioner to approve. Second by Commissioner Archer. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries 3 to 0. Thank you, Commissioner. Item 5, Administrative Communications. Any administrative communications? No? Um, um, go ahead. I, I do, and I, I don't want to put uh, Commissioner Cook on the spot, but I think I will. Uh, <laughs> there was an inner city visit to uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and, uh, and I think Commissioner Cook uh, went on last week. And, and if, if you would be so kind as to maybe give us some of the key themes uh, uh, from the visit. Sure. Uh, Kevin, uh, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, I had the opportunity to leave on Thursday. We flew out through Delta, went to Minneapolis, and then on to Fargo. The planes got smaller the farther <laughs> north we got. <laughs> <laughs> we, we arrived in Fargo. Uh, we immediately uh, began to have some tours of their downtown. We looked at their information technology departments. They Fargo is unique in that, I, quite frankly, I had not been to Fargo before, but if you were to pick up Fargo and put it in Topeka or vice versa, they are really identical. The landscape, the, the feeling, um, it's a little bit cooler, but other than that, I mean, their downtown looks very similar to Topeka's downtown population size, but they've been able to attract a lot of corporations such as Microsoft. They have their, uh, what would be comparable to the Washburn Technical Institute, uh, they have an unemployment rate of 2.8%. Wow. They are looking at needing workers 
and having people come back. And one of the things that they've really been highlighting is bringing people back. Their median age for employment um, is currently right around the uh, 30 range, 28 to 30 range, whereas Topeka is more along the 40 range. Mm -hmm. And so really one of the things that we can look at is what can Shawnee County and what can Topeka learn from Fargo, what things can we take away? And really it was an opportunity to get to see what other people are doing, how they have sales taxes, how they have uh, their taxation, how they have their government structure, and also to meet with county officials, city officials on one of the programs and what they do. So we've been able to draw a lot from that. I think you'll see more of that coming out as there's be more discussions of what Fargo was about. This was the first opportunity that I have had to take a trip uh, with inner city visit and really having local officials and meet, didn't meet other people. Yeah. Uh, now, the more important activity though, Commissioner, was on Saturday I got to judge at the, uh, the Tecumseh Heritage Days. I was one of the pie judges. <laughs> I think that I finally found a job that I am qualified <laughs> for. <laughs> and the Tecumseh, that was a, a great celebration, a great uh, community event. Um, there were sponsors for the uh, pumpkin painting, face painting, wagon rides, car show, uh, music, uh, and of course the pie. And so it was a good time. The apple pie, there was an apple pie that won. <laughs> they had single crust and double crust. There were 19 pies. Wow. I, I suffered through, but <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. you know, somebody had to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and thank you for taking time out yeah. of your schedule away yeah. from your family yes. to attend the inner city visit. Yeah. I, I think it's very important. Will there be some follow-up? Do yes. you understand with the rest of I, some of the elected officials? It's then? my understanding that there's going to be a follow-up from the people that went on the trip as okay. well as with their respective boards and groups okay. to draw us all back together for a community discussion. Okay. Okay. Well, and if you follow Jim Ogle on his <laughs> Twitter account, I looked at one point, I had 19 tweets yeah. from him, so I kind of <laughs> felt like I was there in a weird way, but he did a good job of following him okay. as well. And um, my appreciation also to Commissioner Archer for attending the Built Environment uh, Seminar. Um, um, that was a very good event, and um, I appreciate you attending that well, thank as well. You. So, um, and Tom Block, do you want to do you want to talk about your trip, your trip down the river? At all? Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, at the built environment seminar, the, uh, there was a lot of buzz about um, the Kansas River and the anticipated yes, last, canoe trip. Last Thursday, as most of you are aware, the governor had a float trip to go down the Kansas River to promote uh, the Kansas River as a, it is, has been designated by the National Park System as a national water trail. And they, um, there's been a group called Friends of the Call. It's been very active in trying to uh, find locations and get uh, boat access ramps built all along the Kansas River, the entire stretch. And, um, and they, their goal is to have, I believe, about every 10 miles to have a boat access ramp. Uh, one, for a couple of reasons. Again, to promote the river as a, as, a, as a national water trail. But two, also for emergency access in the event of uh, people in trouble on the river. Um, I had been contacted here in the past, you know, a year or two or so from the Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks to discuss potential access points that we could, uh, might be possibilities uh, in Shawnee County. One uh, is near the Maple Hill Bridge and the other one is near the Willard Bridge. So I was invited to go along just to get an idea of uh, what these boat access ramps are like and just to get a feel for uh, how the river can be used, and I will say it is um, it is really is really neat. It really was a neat uh, experience. And I've been on rivers before. And it's been a while. I've had some Boy Scouts or something like that. But <laughs> but um, and I got stuck in a kayak by myself. Not the type that you flip over, <laughs> unfortunately. But um, um, but I was able to kayak down the, the river. And what's nice about the Kansas River, the most most of the times it's literally about two feet deep the entire time. So if you, you know, there was one time you 
boat got stuck and to get out and just pull off in a little bit deeper water. But um, uh, it's it's you know it's your view is just completely of undeveloped ground mostly. There's some you know agricultural uses along the way, but it's uh, it was a beautiful day, great weather, uh, a little windy at times. Sometimes you get the wind blowing in your face. Um, feels like you're going backwards, but um, um, it it was it was really enjoyable. It was really something. Um, it would be a great family activity, I think, because I think the river, for the, by and large, is very safe because of the shallow, because of the shallow waters. Um, of course, everyone has to, you know, you need to have life jackets, of sure. course. But um, there's sandbars along the way. You can, if you get tired, you can just kind of pull over to a sandbar and get out and rest, and and you can make a day of it. Uh, you know, I think going from point to point, uh, you know, about a 10-mile trip, if you really want to take all day, you could. We did it in about, oh, I think we did it actual paddle time I'd say it was four to five hours that 10 miles takes about yeah. four to five hours yeah paddling. paddling paddling we yeah. went halfway a little over halfway stopped and it was nice they um they had someone there on a sandbar that was grilling hot dogs and chips and cookies and drinks and stuff and water mind you but uh, <laughs> but um but yeah, it was really nice and it would really wouldn't be it really would be a lot of fun to do with a group of friends or family and just spend a a day on the river it's really it's really relaxing because it's not like you're going down the Colorado River or anything yeah, like that true yeah. true but well, no, it's really it's really enjoyable I know some and, of and I think it wouldn't be a big benefit if we can find a, a, so we got a couple I a couple locations identified for Shawnee County if we can figure out a way to get it to work I think it would be a big benefit to Shawnee County and it would complete it would complete the, the, the river um, and I, I really think it is, it is wise for them to promote it the way they are because it is a resource that is out there that um, I think is being untapped, and I think it really could be something something really good for not only the state but also Shawnee County. So, okay. All right. good deal. And there were several city council members I think that mm -hmm. went along as well. So, but he had a busy weekend. All right. Anything else under administrative communications? Uh, good morning again, commissioners. John Knight, Parks and Recreation. Um, there is a group called the National Carousel Association. They came from all over the country. Yes, there really is. There's a, they came from all over the country to come uh, to, to have, hold their national conference in, in uh, is actually in Kansas City, but they went and toured Abilene's Carousel and then the one that's in Gage Park as well. Uh, three buses pulled up, about 150 people, like I said, from all over the country. One of the people that was there to help greet the public was uh, the governor. It was a very nice evening. I was uh, extremely surprised, made a lot of good contacts. They wanted to find out how Topeka and Shawnee County had uh, been able to restore uh, an important treasure like the carousel. Uh, the uh, hardest part of the evening was uh, watching the governor start to get on one of the uh, animals at the merry-go-round or the carousel and him looking really hard at that horse to make sure it wasn't a donkey that he could get on to and give his opponents any more ammo. He was convinced it was a horse, so he went ahead and got on it. But it was a very enjoyable evening. Very good. Thank you, John. Next item, please. Item 6, executive session. And I do not believe we have a need for executive session, so we are adjourned. Seriously, my phone just kept going off.